one. Let's go. Let's go. You are about to experience the uncensored conversations, stimulating wit, and the thought-provoking wisdom. Bold, raw, and uncut. Right now, on the Lance Curve Show. A woman is beaten and robbed after going out on a date with a man she met on Instagram. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of the Lance Curve Show. Dating on social media is becoming a societal norm for millennials. The act of sliding into the direct message feature on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook has allowed millennials to have a larger dating pool than what was available to previous generations. However, there could be some negative aspects when it comes to dating on social media. A Los Angeles-based woman found out the hard way. According to KTLA, India Ali, 32 years old, began communicating with one James Baker, 27 years old, through direct messages on Instagram. Ali found Baker attractive and was drawn to his pictures and videos on Instagram. The two eventually agreed to go out on a date. During the date, which occurred sometime in 2016, Ali and Baker went to eat and drink at a bar. The night seemed to be going well as Ali posted videos and pictures of the date on Instagram. However, Ali doesn't remember what occurred after leaving that bar. The next day, Ali woke up at the Westin Hotel near LAX, Los Angeles Airport, lying in a pool of vomit. Blood was scattered everywhere, and her clothes were all over the room. When she looked into the mirror, her eyes were swollen shut and bruises covered her face. She also realized her car keys and cell phone were missing. Ali was able to call 911 and was rushed to the hospital. Her brain had started to swell due to the blows to her head. When police used the Find My iPhone app feature on her iPhone, they found Baker in Ali's car at another hotel near the airport. Baker was arrested and found guilty of felony assault and theft. Ali hopes to raise awareness about the dangers of dating on social media. Baker will be sentenced on June 5th of this year, 2017. Certain things should remain as they are the old-fashioned way. Whatever happened to dating? Whatever happened to the steps that one takes through the process of dating? While I'm not throwing off on the millennials because they have access to this technology, they need to use some common sense because the technology is not going to protect them. Social media, the grocery store, the church, uh, a party, no matter where you meet someone, you need to take steps when getting to know them. There is no jump to the head of the line feature based on the fact that you like somebody or they present a, a, a reputable image or an image that appeals to you. This is the space in which the shysters operate. They appeal to you. It's so easy in these days, these modern days, these current days to formulate an image to appeal to you to wiggle their way into your life. We can say the right things. We can have the right look. We can pose next to the right cars. We can, we can create a cyber trail that when we search a person, all of a sudden their, their background looks so good to us and we open up the doors too quick. I just don't understand it. This is unfortunate for the young lady that this happened to. And, and in no way am I blaming her. I'm just saying that the procedure these days I'm blaming because these youngsters which India Ali is 32 years old and James Baker was 27. So they're not youngsters per se, but to me, I would say that they are. And they acted in a way that was irresponsible. Um, you Look, it used to be back in the day. I, I'm, I hate to sound like an old geezer, right? But this is what it is. You had things that, that happened, right? When people live risky lifestyles. But back in the day, 
when you had to know someone through someone and you had to know where they lived. You had to know friends of their friends and knew who they hung around, knew who their parents were, knew what they did for a living, know their track record and observe it in person before even going out on a date with somebody. So how are you going to find yourself in a hotel room on the first date after meeting somebody off of social media? And again, I'm not blaming, but I have to say it this way because there are people who would consider doing just that and who have done just that. That's not the way it's done because when situations like this happen, you regret it. And let me tell you something. Lots of situations like this and less and even more have happened, but people just don't report it because they don't want to be embarrassed because of their lack of good judgment. We have to be careful these days. There are so many imbalanced nuts running around out here. Activated nuts. <laughs> I can turn that into a nasty joke, but I won't do it. What I mean by activated nuts is that you have people back in the day who had, had a propensity for being a little imbalanced, right? And, and they weren't stimulated as they are now. What do I mean? You can get on social media. You can get on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and see very provocative pictures of real people put up. And you can reach out to them and contact them and speak with them and flirt with them and have a pseudo type proximity or relationship with them that in your nutty mind, you think you're really dealing with the person or you've already made up in your mind what you're going to do with this person. And it may not be the nicest of uh, 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 plans. We have a lot of imbalanced men and women out here of both sexes. So this is not a man or a woman thing. It's just that the victim here happened to be a woman. But there are many male victims out here also. So let's not play the sex game in this uh, situation. This can happen either way. But being a woman, you've got to really, really, really protect yourself. And being a man, just don't think because you have muscles or greater physical strength that something couldn't be dropped in your drink and render you useless and powerless and, and not able to defend yourself. People come at you sometimes because they can go through your profiles and ascertain that, well, he must have a little money tucked away. He is working for so long and he's in this area of expertise and he seems to be very smart and I can get money from them. And you have men out here, men out here who are resentful of women. They see a nice looking young lady who's friendly and it triggers something off in them. They become Activated. Who does she think she is? She thinks she's all that. And these men may feel as though they're not good enough for any woman and resent the woman who may have more options, date them and want to kill them, want to beat them, want to want to abuse them. Let me tell you something. There's not really a day where I don't see someone in the street in a physical fight, meaning that a boyfriend and a girlfriend, husband and wife or some type of extended FWB friends with benefits if you don't know what that is it's people who are attached to other people and they become friends for the benefits for the sexual benefits that if you're feeling horny and you want a sp specific act performed or whatever kink or fetish you have that the person at home is not doing you can call this person up and it's no holds barred this is what it is meet me over here for 30 minutes we'll park up or we'll go into a room we'll go down on each other and it's, we're gone. And that's what it is. I'm just telling you all what it is. FWB. I, I, it makes me think of uh, uh, SWV. <laughs> the singing group. <laughs> I get so weak in the loins. I have to call my FWB. That didn't sound right. I think I'm going to keep my day job. But anyway, that's what it is. And so there's not a day... That goes by where I don't see some type of argument or dispute or outright physical bad interaction. Folks fighting in the street. And it's because, you know, sometimes we put ourselves out there. And we're not all that we're cracked up to be or we're very de de deceitful and, and full of deception. You know, so much is based on deception. 
And you got to be careful what you're looking at that might look too good to be true. If it looks too good to be true and you didn't check it out, chances are it's too good to be true. This is what I don't understand. But people move on. They're a little horny. They're a little lonely. They think they hit the jackpot and somebody else is going to take this person. So I better move on in and give them the goods. Or you could just be enjoying yourself. This young lady, I'm not going to put any dirt in her life or whatever or assume anything. I'm using this situation to speak about the overall situations out here in the world, right? And we are just too free with ourselves and we throw caution to the wind because they're driving a nice car or they, they, they have a nice cologne and jewelry and they speak right. Let me tell you something. We have a lot of good looking men out here who are just not right in their head. Most of us are not. And we're getting this information at such an accelerated rate. We, we have become our profile page and our profile image, and that's it. And men, men and women flip through these things. Click, click. Oh, he got a nice six-pack. Click, click. Oh, he looked like he got money. That looks like his uh, nice car he got. Click, click. Oh, he got some pretty eyes. Click, click. Oh, he got, he's light-skinned and got straight kind of hair. I can have a, a light-skinned baby. Some of us are sick like that. There are many reasons why we choose to be or or date or reach out to the people that we reach out to. Many of us feel voids from within. And we feel that this person can be an answer to the voids that we have in our life. That if we have this person in our life and walking next to us and dealing with them, I'll be fulfilled. Don't we or shouldn't we look to fulfill ourselves and become whole without the next person? But let me tell you about Dayton back in the day. And I, I mentioned it earlier, but I'm going to say a little more. Dating doesn't mean having sex with a person. Dating doesn't mean kissing on the person. Dating is legitimate. Real dating is the way you should do it. Yes, I'm going to tell you what you should do, which will, will protect you from situations like this. When you go out on a date, you have to know a lot about this person before you go out on this date. And when you go out on this date, other people have got to know that the both of you are going out on this date. If you are a young lady, lady, let's take it this way, right? And you're going out on a date with a man. Your friends have got to know where you are. And you've got to know where he lives, what his address is. He should be willing to give up the information that's necessary. And I'll go a step further, and maybe a lot of men are going to slam me for this. Because you know what? It works both ways. Men, you can't just, you know, look at a big button, a smile, and, and take it for granted. It works both ways. I need to see a license. I need to see and know where you live, where you work, your friends. It, look, my life, and I'm speaking to the ladies, right? And this is the way you should be thinking, that your life and your body and your time is too precious just to give it away to anybody who you just don't know because of their surface appearance. This is what's going to get you in trouble. Dating takes time. You only go out on a date to sample and try out the male energy, the energy of this person. It's no commitment. It, it, it's no commitment whatsoever. You're not signing anything on any dotted line. You're merely checking out their energy to see what it is that you like and what you don't like in a man. It's okay to date multiple men because there's nothing physical going on. You're checking each other's energy out and it's a learning experience for you as you get older and you can enjoy the time with someone. If you're a young lady and you go out on a Righteous date with some man, somebody you already checked out, somebody you feel good about, and now you're going out on a date. It could be something as simple as him sneezing around you and not covering up his mouth, which is a very nasty habit. It's a very inconsider inconsiderate habit to have. You're just spraying out your germs and you don't have the consideration to cover your mouth. He could be the greatest date in the world and that would disgust you. And now you know I can't be with a man who has no manners and who sneezes like that. That could be a deal breaker for some other people. They don't care. 
but you're learning yourself and what you like and what you don't like so that when you meet that ultimate person, you know what it is and the qualities that they must possess. He might say, well, let's go Dutch. And, and you know, or you might say, let's go Dutch on a date. And he insists that he pays. Now, we could take that two ways. We could say, well, you know, he's been real kind and trying to pay for the date. And I'm all with it because I save half the money on this date. On the other hand, he might be a control freak who doesn't want the woman to have any input. And while you might be thinking that he's such a great guy, he's got his mind set on sinking his talons into you, in your life, and you're walking right into it. And later on, you have it all thrown back up in your face. I paid for the date. I paid for this. I paid for you to go to this, and so and so and so and so. That tells you that that kind of man is not the kind of man you want. He may speak and say some things or have some inconsistencies in his story and what he shares with you. And you better follow up on that. But wait a second, you did say that um, you had your own place. Now you're saying that you're living with your mother. Now, you should already know these things righteously when you check up on somebody. But a lot of our millennials and some of our older folk are not going to do that. When a person has to lie about something that and there's no real need to lie. Right. But when a person lies just to lie. Right. I mean, OK, he might lie and say he's. Five foot ten and he ends up being five foot seven to lie at all is not good. But that's a little you can see where, OK, he's a shorter guy and he, he didn't really want to, you know, tell, tell me that he was shorter. But that can lead to other things. When somebody says something about their living conditions that are so off. Well, what else are you hiding? I heard of a situation one time where the dating went well over the years and uh, these two became engaged and they eventually got married. And when they were looking to buy a home and the, you know, the, the brokers and the people involved in the, the purchase of the home had to run a credit check and the banks and everything. There was a crap load of stuff that this guy owed with a ton of child support. And she didn't know this. She said, wait a second, I didn't even know you had a child or three or four, like it really was. So your time, your life, it's not just emotions and the warm fuzzies that we feel because we like somebody. It's also in this modern day, a business decision, life force, energy, time, all of those things are precious to you. And when you find yourself in an advantageous position after working so hard to get to a certain point in your life of freedom, of, of independence, it's not just the fact that, oh, you're a nice person. No, you stand to lose all of those things when you invest your life with the wrong person. Heck, you stand to lose your life when you invest your time with the wrong person, just like India Ali found out here in the situation where she woke up in vomit and blood and the swelling of the brain. Why did this man do this? And he stole her phone, stole her car, and he seemed like he was all that. That man deserves to have his teeth kicked in. He deserves a beat down and there is something wrong with him. And I hate to say it, and not that I hang with these people, but there are a lot of males that I know of and have been around for a short period of time that to me are extremely imbalanced and a disaster waiting to happen. I know men that resent women, just not even a specific woman, but women in general, they resent them, but they want them for sex. They want them for uh, uh, their resources. They want them for money. They want to use them. And they will appear to be whatever you want to find themselves on in. They're very deceptive this way. I'm not saying all men. I'm not crapping on men to get favor with women. Because in the beginning of this recording, I said that this can work both ways. It does work both ways. But I'm only speaking this way because this is a woman who in this case was a victim. And I can understand why many women want to be by themselves, but we're not created to be that way. But we have to take time to get to know the people that we allow in our life, even if it's not a dating situation, but even if it's just a, a situation where it's friends. And sometimes like that refrigerator that may cut off in the middle of the night because, because of a power outage that happened while you were sleeping, the good food can become spoiled overnight. 
So we got to keep checking up on the energy of the people that we allow in our life. Friends, acquaintances, dating, even your spouse, even when you're married, a person can change on you. Things can lay dormant for many, many years. And a man or a woman can wake up and come to kill you. I had a situation many, 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 many years ago. Don't try to figure out when, but it was many, many years ago where there was a young lady that I was involved with. I'll say it that way, right? But I knew her enough. And a year or two went by and we weren't involved anymore. And I was involved with someone else. And it happened where, and I'm saying this in a very broad way, and most people are not going to figure out who and the time or nothing, so they don't even ask me, my close friends know, right? I thought she was mature enough, so when she asked me uh, for, for to come over to my part of town because she had a job interview that next morning, it was difficult for her to get there if she can come by and maybe spend the night. And I asked the friend that I was involved with, wasn't living with her, but I would spend time over there. She said, I have no problem with it. I know you dated her or messed around with her many years before, but she seems to be cool. That's the way she was. I said, okay, no problem. Well, anyway, after the young lady who a uh, uh, name was on the lease had to get up to go to work early that next morning, I was on my way up to get on out of there to do the same. Because we had that kind of friendship and connection. The other lady that I knew prior that I was involved with, with it sometime, when I woke up, she was standing over me, Lance Scurve, crying without a stitch of clothes on, and I couldn't understand what the hell was going on. It wasn't time for her to leave yet, but she was crying. And so she said, Lance, I'm so sorry. And from behind her back, she revealed to me that she had a knife and that she was going to stab me to death. And she dropped the knife and, and she, she, she wanted to embrace me. I was, it was a very awkward moment because I'm like, you want to embrace me? And I'm sitting up in here in some other woman's house, but you're naked and trying to kill me. What kind of story would that look like? This is true, y'all. I've been through it. Let me throw something else. And I handled the situation excellently. Right. And she was having flashbacks and wanted certain old things to happen, but it didn't. But I had to talk my behind off because that knife, when it fell to the ground, it wasn't too far. Once I got my hands on it and got my hands on her in a gentle but firm way while speaking to her. Right. OK. You know, I got out of there myself and she got out of there too. close call. Y'all. It can happen to anybody. Here's another situation. And I'm not going to mention any names, but there's someone who is going to listen to this, who knows this person that I'm speaking of. And this is in the modern day. And my friend whose name starts with a B and he would ride the 36 with me. That's all I have to say, because you already know who you are. Right. And I'm sorry I haven't gotten back to you, man. I've been running crazy, but I'm glad that situation worked out. But I'm going to say to him. If you could remember that friend that rode with us that was always so friendly that said that she wanted to go down with you to Miami sometime. And you said, yeah, let's do that. Let's switch numbers. But she disappeared. That young lady who was always friendly and, and not in any kind of romantic way trying to get next to somebody. But she did try to push up on me personally for some type of advantage. Her living situation wasn't right. She asked me personally, and I'm putting it out there, if I had any extra rooms, when in fact she watched my videos and understood that I did. So she was trying to not use me, but fly under the radar for certain reasons, and I didn't even know it yet, right? Okay, let's move forward. She had a boyfriend or something who she said was beating her. She had problems with him. And she wanted to get out of that situation. She also asked me if I knew of any work off of the books. And it didn't strike me as funny, but I said, no, not really. I hear things popping up here and there. But if I do, I'll let you know. And she was very aggressive with that. And she happened to be moving about here and there because her living situation wasn't right. Oh, Lance, I'm living near you now, but I still want to know if you got that room. Um, I'm living over here across town now. So and so and so. My numbers changed. 
I'm like, okay, I got other things in my mind. I don't have to have the time to focus on one person and what they're doing. So I take it at face value because you're not as close to me yet. Well, why, why am I saying all this? Well, about three nights ago, I'm sitting up and I was editing some video. And, you know, when you edit stuff and render it and you have to wait for that long line for it to go from 2% and 12% and 27%. I'm like, man, I've been waiting for an hour. So I'm writing and embellishing things on my blog and make sure to sign up with the blog landscurve.com. That's where everything will be. And my focus will be on the blog that I've had for so many years for the last 15 years. Thank God I have that because social media can let you down. But while I was killing time, I'm sitting here and this is a habit that I picked up when I worked in corrections, right? Worked in a jail, worked in a prison. Lots of times we get online if we do have online access or on the intranet in the prison or the jail, you will look at the charges and the mug shots of the, of the inmates that are there to know and have a heads up on what they did and what they have the uh, 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 prospect of doing if you have to deal with them, okay? So now, you know, we have mug shots out there and I'm looking around at this particular county, uh, the mug shots that are there, and I'm, I'm just going through it, bing, bing, bing. Okay, let's look up... Uh, uh, panhandling. Let's see who the panhandlers are. I happen to see a lot of people that I see when I'm driving the bus out in the street. Oh, that's why I didn't see them for a while. They're locked up now. Okay, this one got locked up for methamphetamine. This one got locked up for, for battery on a law enforcement officer. This one got locked up for prostitution. This one is a child molester. Oh, man, that little man rides my bus all the time. He's so friendly. So I look through these things and I happen to also love faces. As an artist, I love faces. So I'm clicking through and I'm looking at these women now. I was in a mood to see the females in my area who were doing things. And I kept clicking and some of them you could tell were on drugs. Some of them you could tell that they were beat, but they still got locked up for domestic violence. A face tells a million stories. So I'm click, 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 click. Oh my God. What's up with this girl? Who used to ride the 36 bus with me? Who wanted to know if I had an extra room in my house? If, if, if she can get work off the books, if I knew anybody who could hook her up that way. Well, guess what? She was wanted up in the panhandle for armed robbery. She was wanted in the connection of a murder. Credit card fraud. Oh, I mean, just a whole rap sheet, a whole list. Of things that, you know, usually when somebody is stealing cars and they move somewhere else, they keep stealing cars. Usually when somebody um, does armed robbery or, or, or sells drugs, when they move around, they pretty much stick to their lane. But this chick was like the Wawa, the 7-Eleven of crime. She had a vast array of so many different things. You know, when you go to 7-Eleven or you go to Wawa or whatever gas station that offers so much, you can get a Subway, uh, 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 not a Subway, you can get a Sub. I'm thinking about Subway. I haven't eaten that in a long time with their rubber bread. Check that. You need to stop eating that stuff if you're eating Subway. But you can get a Sub. You can get some ice cream. You can get a magazine, a lotto ticket, and a condom. You know, depending on what, liquor if you want. You go use the bathroom, come out. I mean, you can get anything there. So she had that kind of rap sheet where she had a, a connection with a murder, armed robbery, credit card fraud. And there were a couple other things, too. She carried some weapons that she wasn't supposed to carry. So I'm looking at her face and the face in the mugshot just looked so nice and so warm the way she puts it out. She didn't reveal through her look what she was all about. And I'm like, wow, people can be so devious. And what would happen if I was so foolish enough to let her in my inner circle or into my life physically where she's in my house renting a room? All the stuff I got in here. Or maybe the perception that I have something that I don't have. You just don't know. I mean, this is why in dating back in the day, it took time just to go on that date. You didn't go out with anybody that you just don't know. Social media has made it too easy for that these days. And some of us fall into that trap. We not It's not even just a dating thing, but it's a business thing. People can say they know how to do something and they don't know how to do anything, but they take your money and disappear. I admit I've had that happen to me and we have some good ones. You know, they do things for you and things turn up missing or it's just we got frauds out here, y'all. And most people out here in the world, I have to say, they work harder to look like the real thing instead of being the real thing. 
and they should not be insulted when you demand to show that they are the real thing. Because if you know that you're real, they have no problem showing you that they are real too. And this is how it goes. Don't accept the fraud in your life. Don't have anybody come into your life who is untested. Do you think a bank is going to give a loan just because you're a nice looking person? No. Let me see your credit report. Let's run your credit report and see your behavior with the other creditors that you've had. Oh, you don't pay your bills on time. Sorry. Nice day. You could look like a nice person, but you're not going to get any of this money. You want to work at a daycare? Well, let's run your background check. Oh, you've been molesting kids. Okay. You're, you've paid your debt to society, all of this and all of that, fine. But you're not coming up in here with that kind of record. If you meet a man and he seems to be all right and you want to become engaged with this person, but he doesn't work a job or has no way of earning money and has no dream beyond the job, we got a lot of employed bums out here, y'all. A lot of employed bums. They got jobs and can hold jobs for a long time, but they have no impetus to go beyond that job. You don't want to deal with anybody like that. You want somebody who can dream and go even higher than that. And even if they don't do it, they're striving for it. You don't just sit down and, and deal with, well, this is what I make an hour and this is what it's going to be. Now, if you're somebody old or whatever, you, you're not physical, physically able, but even older people, they should be dreaming. You should be dreaming until your last breath is drawn. So you got to watch their walk in this life, not just what somebody else tells you. See, so we got to be careful because even when we check it out, it doesn't mean that they're not capable of doing something twisted like this man did. James Baker, who did this to India Ali and left her for dead in a Los Angeles hotel near the airport. You see, just think of it this way. We have career criminals. We have career shysters. We have career womanizers. We have career users. But at one point in time, before that criminal was a criminal, before that user was a user, before that womanizer was a womanizer, they were doing what they were doing before we discovered it. And we have a lot of imbalanced people that look very balanced and sane, but they have not been caught doing what they do or they haven't even done it yet. How do you know this person who's around you is not a person who is a killer who hasn't killed yet? But once they kill you, now we know them as a killer. So until you know the energy and check them out thoroughly and it has to resonate from within, don't let anybody in your life too easy. Because it might mean the end of yours. Make sure to check out the boldest blog at landscurve.com and follow Scurve on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube under Lance Scurve.